Hello and welcome to Epic Battle Cry. Woo-hoo! This is the place where we cut through the crap every once in a while and sometimes on Fridays. The, it's in, Friday! On Fridays we do because it's Friday and we're, we're ready to go as well. So uh, <laughs> anyway, it is Friday, August 21st. I wrote a song uh, for Friday. I'm your host, actually. Tony Grice, like of course, this. here. Friday, with Daniel. Friday, Daniel. gotta get yeah, down. Yeah, that song's on. terrible. Oh, that's great. <laughs> with Daniel Geyser and Brent Adams. And Matthew. We've actually got a question hey, from Matt. Matthew today. He is at... Burke, Burkow, Burko, Burke, Burke Alter, Burke, Burke. Yes, and uh, his is at Epic Battle Axe and at Casey D Hudson, which oh, might give you an idea where the question is going. Uh, Casey D Hudson departs Bioware. Yeah. Do you think EA access plans played a part in that? Uh, are big names going to mm. the, going the way of indie devs? I'd say so, Mass uh, Effect Three played a part. <laughs> well, that I, I think that's what we were all going to probably say. So yeah, do you want to just start us off, Brent? What do you think? I mean, is that how big a part does EA access specifically play? You think? I don't know. I mean, it seems like EA access is almost, although they're not saying it, it really seems like it's almost geared towards their sports lineup. And, and most of the positive feedback I've seen on it has been, oh well, you know, if you play EA sports games, this is this is you know a great deal yeah. for you. Uh, so I, I have to say that I don't exactly see um, I don't exactly see the connection between uh, between EA Access and, and, and Casey Hudson's departure from uh, from Bioware. And I'm gonna you know I'm gonna speak a little out of turn here you know because Daniel has actually spoken to Casey Hudson and I have not. But um, in, in my mind, uh, it, it seems to me that he's probably just done what uh what he he's he wanted to do with this phase of his career at bioware yeah. he's probably ready to to move on and do something different that uh that is a little bit uh, of a little bit different variety and yeah it wouldn't surprise me at all if he goes the way of say uh, stoic games you know where he wants to kind of get away from the, the the big game development environment and do something smaller and more nimble just you know something that that's really about executing an idea not having to deal with all of the all of the headaches and bureaucracy that come along with Working for an entity as big as Bioware and uh, and EA, so mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, I I mean to me it, it just it it feels just like I did what I wanted to do. I'm moving on, and yeah. if he if he does end up moving on to a smaller you know indie dev kind of situation, maybe forms his own studio, I, I wouldn't at all be surprised. He'd, he'd be following in the footsteps of a lot of really talented people. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's a good point, uh, DK. What do you think? I mean, you sort of the same well, boat, or yeah. And I will say this was particularly sad for me. Just and and I tweeted at Casey just to you know let him know how much I appreciated interviewing him over the years. But him as well as Dr. Ray and Dr. Greg um, at Bioware, those three guys really throughout my career at Game Trailers. I mean, it was just always so awesome to interview them. Obviously, I'm a fan of Bioware. Have 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 really appreciated the work that they've put forth. Um, and it really signified to me, you know, obviously an end of an era at Bioware, but also, you know, that we're in a different age. And and to answer the question, I, I don't think EA Access, as you were saying, Brent, necessarily played a part in Casey's decision. It might have compounded an already existing yeah. thought or, or feeling that the commercialization of games and, and everything else is is leaving less room for creativity and, and, and more of you know churning out games in a factory like setting um and that's something that you know hey there's money in it it's a career it's stable uh you do it it's fine but for like you were saying brent I, you know someone like casey probably been there done that and it's time to move on do something else we've seen cliff blazinski depart the industry start bosky productions uh, and now casey might do something smaller like that but when you look around and and you see um where a lot of the fun imagination and innovation is happening, you know, like this this game Ori in the Blind Forest or games like Below or previous games like, um, you know, uh, um, Brothers, of course, my one of my favorite games, Tale of Two Sons, and Very also Guardian of Light. Uh, y- you know, y- you see these smaller games that require less manpower and these developers, to, to answer th- this question specifically from, from Matthew about, you know, are big names going the way of indie devs? I would say absolutely. I would say that there's more interest in being able to have a small team and work on creating a game and there's more opportunity You've got Kickstarter. So you can pitch your game to somebody, and if it doesn't fly, then you can take it to Kickstarter based on merit and the idea, uh, name merit and the idea. So I think that big game developers 
are in fact starting to question, hey, do I really need to be a part of this machine? Can I be creative? Can I do this independently? If so, can I be successful financially? And also, can I make the game that I want to make? It, it, you know, it's going to yeah. be on a smaller scale, but a lot of the, you know, you unless you're Star Citizen. Exactly. And I think they still need more money. I don't know. But anyway, um, the, the Listen, bottom. At, at no point in our lifetime will there ever be a sentence uttered that rhymes with Star Citizen has sufficient funds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I think people like Casey can really play their cards well and say, I've worked on this. I want to get a team of, you know, a really, just a really small team, and I want to work on this cool project and have it funded on Kickstarter or have a publisher back it. You know, like I know. You know Joseph uh, Fars from the you know brothers. That he's getting ready to announce. I probably shouldn't say this, but he's getting ready to announce <laughs> his next game. And and it, hang on, it, let me tweet real fast. Daniel right. Kaiser announces. Well, anyway, it, you know that's the success that he he's gained from brothers, um, and it's going to be awesome. So you know, the, at at the end of the day, you graduate in success, and you basically restart the cycle. But yeah. I think the cycle is growing stale to a lot of these big name developers and they've grown cynical. Um, Why the, would they get cynical? And the Come industry on. is at a stage of commercialization and, and overexposure and, and Tomb Raider exclusives where you just feel like, well, shit, I just want to make well, great yeah, games and have this them be on the Tomb Raider exclusive. I, shit, yeah. I sometimes... I, 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 de- like, I agree... Both, both of you, I think, are, are right on plan. I, and, and let's just start off. I'll answer the first question. I don't think this really had anything to do with access. I Nothing. kind of agree with Daniel. It might have been like that that last feather that landed on on the back and, you know, kind of tipped you in one direction. But, I mean, I, I, I would actually say that this was probably known to, to EA before that announcement even happened, if I was honest. Because yeah. I'd say big, big things like this usually are sort of in the works before we even hear about them. But anyway, maybe not. But I don't think access had anything to do with this. I really think that this is not even something even so much as like, you know, oh, we, you know, we're not able to do what we want to do here and we want to move on. I, I, I think it's just the natural progression. I mean, you, you saw the, the original founders of BioWare left just a couple years ago. Yep. And, you know, I think it's just that they are at a point in their career, you know, like people, you know, yeah. like Casey are at a point in their career. Where they're like, hey, look, EA is going to be buying us. That, that's happening. You know, we know that's happening now. I think I'm going to stay on. I want to see what I'll be able to do with this team. Because you know what? Hey, we're going to have an influx of money that we might not have had before. Uh, we're going to have maybe some resources to us that maybe we didn't have before. Who knows? Maybe this works out real well. Then, you know, Mass Effect 3, I think, definitely... I don't, I don't think came out as well as anybody hoped, even them. I don't think they quite got out of it what they wanted. And so maybe that's the thing where it's like, okay, hey, I gave it a shot. I think now, and, and to be brutally honest, I'm trying to be, you know, but I got a payday out of it, I'm sure. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure he made out fine with whatever deal happened when, when EA, you know, got the, gobbled him up. And, and whenever he left them, I don't think that he was in, you know, hard times per se. So that, that has worked for him to where he can now have more freedom to do something on that indie level that he that he couldn't yeah. have done ten years prior, you know right. this is this is just like you know starting a, a you know a new studio 10, 20 years ago. Except right. now it's just maybe where the money comes from is a little different than where where it used to be. Um, but essentially the process is the same. You know, hey, I want to make great games. I thought I could maybe do it here, didn't quite work out. Let's try it somewhere else. And uh, I, I you know I don't think that this is. I don't even think that this is a bad thing. I don't even think it's bad for EA that that big name developers leave them necessarily because that frees up positions for people but that for worked at a Bioware lower level to step specifically, up. Specifically, it does. You know, I mean, Bioware. Well, no, I mean, who who knows that the next per- who knows that the next Casey Hudson isn't. Yeah. Isn't, isn't sitting at a lower level in the company that is just waiting for a position to open up to where he could take the chance of being director on the next game. And who knows that that's not the next favorite game of everybody in the world. You know, just because someone that's leaves true, a company really doesn't necessarily mean it's bad for bo- one or the other. You know, Ray and Greg as figureheads of that company were really something else and something special. You know, just like... Ken Levine and you know and, and all yeah, those but that, guys. That's that's pretending like there's not lots of special people though that no, there maybe are, but we it, don't have a chance to see no, shine. I, you know, no, I, 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 don't, I don't think this is good or bad. I mean, this is not bad for either party. Like I'm just saying that I think, hey, you know, if he's ready to leave, this is probably a good thing for EA as well yeah. because if he's ready to leave, that means that he probably couldn't put as much passion into the projects they were wanting out of him there. True. So he can go on do the stuff that he wants to do, and that's great. And we're gonna we're gonna get some great things from him. So it's awesome for him. There's 
no negative to that. There, and, and I think that it's not necessarily a bad thing for EA either, because I think that that means that they now have a shot at potentially putting the next big name in, in gamings into that position, or at least, you know, a, a shot at trying something new. It may not work. It may be the greatest thing that ever happens to them. Who knows? You know, the next the next game that comes out of BioWare as a studio Maybe now could be your favorite game ever. You're right. Maybe I just need to run BioWare. Hey, maybe. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think that that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. I mean, really, I, I'm not even being funny. Like, that's the thing. When when op- when opportunities, opportunities are just opportunities. It's an opportunity for Casey to go do what he wants to do. And it's an opportunity for someone else to take on a, a, a more uh, powerful role in, in that studio. And that could take them to the next level. It could end them. Who knows? I mean, but that's, that doesn't, that's not... You can't worry about what's what what negative might happen. You just have to do your best to my, hope that it's the next great thing. My first move as president of Bioware is to launch an all new series called Mass Effect and spell it with an A. Mass Effect. <laughs> okay. I, I, hey, listen. I didn't buy the last three titles, so I don't know if I'll buy that one. But uh, you know, hey, I, I but think it's spelled differently. It is spelled differently. You should get Sierra to produce. You know, to <laughs> to put their name on it because that Bobby. apparently makes it better. I guess I don't know. I wonder if Activision knows that their new game studio is named after a mm. stripper. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that stripper was named after Sierra, the game company from like the <laughs> early 80s. Ooh. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, good good question from uh, from Matthew, uh, and that uh, that wraps up our week. If you're catching this one, but maybe didn't catch the ones earlier in the week, you can always uh, check the old uh, epicbattleaxe.com website, or if you want to see uh, see them. As we, uh, as we put them out, check out the YouTube channel and give us some more questions for next week over at uh, Twitter slash Twitter. at, or, yeah, Twitter. or at Epic Battle Axe. No slash. No slash. That's reserved for the noises. No more. Have a good week, guys. You know, uh, in your defense, Daniel, I agree with Tony that you running Bioware is not the craziest thing I've ever heard. Now, you opening a restaurant mm. uh, where you oh, put calls. cheese on top of the quesadilla. <laughs> That's amazing. That is a much crazier you know, what idea. Was the, what was the other one about the uh, fun, fun, fun... Do you fun do? Do you fun do? You fun do? But, that, but that wasn't an idea so much as, is there site. a domain that I could buy? No, let's be, let's be fair. They're all, is that a domain that I could buy? And then the, the concept comes later. He admitted it that very week. That's, that's true. You did, you did kind of cop to that, didn't there you? There is zero doubt that if I, you come up with a good name, a good marketing pitch, then you build a company around it. That's, uh-huh. that's how it works. That's how, that's how that shit works. So when works. are you going to come up with this good name? <laughs>